Hooray! Hey, Octavia! And Kenjiro! Hey, guys! Welcome back! So, we're gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna do our writer's workshop. And then at 1.30, we will start Fortnite. Okay. So today, I thought we'd just talk about how to combat your insecurities as a writer, um, especially a new writer. A major problem I find with a lot of the mentality of people that first start writing is they think their stuff isn't good enough. And usually I'll hear things, especially when we do creative writing workshops and the like, a lot of them will say, you know, it isn't very good or, you know, I'm not very good or, you know, sorry, you're having to read my crap. And, you, you know, we all kind of think about it that way, but it has the opposite effect on the person that you want it to when you hand it to them because now you've pretty much given them permission to think less of your writing and I'm not saying do something like hum you know humble brag be like oh it's it's not very good but you secretly know you've put a lot of time and effort into it and it's gonna be like amazing but whatever you know their opinion doesn't matter like <laughs> don't be one of those people <laughs> nobody likes those but do kind of understand that everybody goes through what you're going through with the early stages of writing and it really depends on what level of writing you're wanting to get into someone like me that wants to do it professionally um, i'm gonna hold myself to a different standard than say someone that maybe just kind of wants to do it for a hobby and relax and have have fun and write stories and I'm not saying those stories aren't good I have read some amazing stories from people that just want to write as a hobby and they don't want to make it a profession and for me the reason why I push myself so much is I am aiming for that professional um, agency publisher uh, all of that and that takes time it takes it doesn't just take months it takes years I've been in this process I, I think I first started seriously writing in 2013 that's when I really tried to pursue it like professionally and I went the self-publishing route which I wish if I had <laughs> if I had gone back I would have actually chosen to do it much differently. I would have tried to go for a publisher instead. Oh, no, no, no. It's the same hairstyle. You guys just don't realize that I, I sweep it all. <laughs> so I have bangs, but I have, um, I have a really fickle personality. I don't like to be the same constantly. It's like a thing. I don't know. So I like to change my hair up. Every so many years, I get this little urge and I'll dye it. Like, I haven't dyed my hair in like over two years now. I think it's been almost three years since I've dyed my hair. Because I just get bored. I get bored with everything. Everything gets boring to me. So, like, I have to have the option to have bangs or not. And I, I like to keep them a certain length so that I can brush them off to the side if I want to or put them down. <laughs> Yeah, Octavia coming in with those uh, helpful hints there. Not so much confidence you need, but determination in the world of writing. Well, you have to have confidence, though. It's not just it's not just determination. If you don't have confidence in yourself as a writer, how are you going to convince somebody else to take your story? You know, like I totally get what you're saying, though. You really do need determination I think it's a combination like you have to have you have to have the drive and the persistence and yeah determination same thing to really like get through because there's gonna be super lo low points in your writing um, just like streaming streaming is same thing you're gonna have high points you're gonna have low points you're gonna have what the fuck am I doing points <laughs> 
So yeah, I mean, you you have to really pursue something if it's what you want to do with your life. If it's just kind of a hobby, then yeah, you're not you're not really gonna try to, I guess, abuse yourself. <laughs> That's the term I'm looking for. <laughs> the way I do, um, I really hold myself to a high standard, and I'm super hard on myself. And I think it's probably just the personality that I am. Some people that are super lax and super chill write really amazing stories too. So don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh no, it's, yeah, oh, it, it's not good. Yeah, but and so getting back to that point, um, having the confidence and the determination is fantastic, but learning from other people is key to improve. So if you can't take um, constructive criticism well, then you're not going to be the kind of person that can be a writer because you have to have thick skin. You have to look at your own writing objectively, which can be hard, especially since a lot of writers put their own emotions and their own, I guess, character type in their stories. They also are writing from their viewpoints, which is why I caution a lot of writers to only write what's comfortable for them because you're not going to grow as a writer. Um, you're going to be one of those one-hit wonders where people buy all of your stuff and then you know you like pump out the same things over and over again. It gets boring, you know. And a good editor, like that is that's amazing to have. Um, if you have a good editor that's also within your budget, that's even more fantastic. Sometimes you have to go a little out of budget to get a decent editor. But that's the whole point of um, you know what I'm trying to do right now with going through a publisher. I realized my weak points are uh, grammar and sentence structure. Sometimes I don't structure a sentence to where it flows very well because it's you know it makes sense in my head, but for somebody else reading it, maybe it could have you know been shifted a bit or had one sentence or one paragraph placed in a different spot that kind of makes sense for flow. So I need someone else to look at that and go, oh, hey, you know what? This would make so much more sense if you structured it this way. And that's why I love peer reviews, because if you're hearing it from more than one person, like, hey, this sentence is worded really bizarrely. Like, I don't understand why you worded it this way. Or this word, um, I don't I don't think this word means what you think this word means um, you might want to go check your your dictionary or your thesaurus and figure out what word you were actually meaning there and I've done that a few times I've gotten better over the years at certain words like like thesaurus.com and dictionary.com are my friend because I I'll think I've got the right word spelled in there like I think it was the word was it? It was the word like chuck, like chuck, as in chuck something. And I thought it was chunk, like C-H-U-N-K. And I found out, my friend was like, no, I think you meant chuck. And so I actually went through a few other people and they're like, yeah, no, that was the wrong word. <laughs> so a really awesome editor is great to have. Yeah, no, if you're, if you're pursuing the big leagues, um, you really have to stay on top of your game and remember it's, it's a competition. Um, not just a competition with other writers, it's a competition to get, um, to get properly represented by someone. So you're not only looking for a top end editor and a top agent, you also wanna see what that agent um, like who they're representing and who they've gone through as far as publishers are concerned. So you have to properly arm yourself uh, to get into the publishing world and you also have to arm yourself with a thick skin and understand that what they're telling you, they know sells. So even if it's something that you may not particularly agree with, if they're telling you something you need to change as a writer in order to make it, you've got to do that and a lot of people can't get past that point a lot of people take critique personally a lot of people 
get too caught up in, but this is my story that I'm telling you. And being that I've gone the self-publication route and now moving over to publication, it's like tough love, you know? They're telling you, you've got a certain amount of, you know, something to your writing and it's nice and it pulls people in but it's not going to get you where you need to be financially. So that's why it's so important to arm yourself with those people that know what they're doing. Like I, for instance, do not know how to market myself um, at all. So it's nice to let somebody else do that. Oh yeah, arrogance. I've met a lot of arrogant writers, Octavia. A lot of people that seem to think their writing is God and unfortunately, <laughs> It really sucks. I have encountered a few people who believe their writing is God and their writing actually was pretty good. So it's really annoying when that happens because it's like, oh, I just want to like, I just want to like hammer you into the ground because you're such a jerk. But at the same time, like I still acknowledge like, okay, yeah, they've obviously put a lot of time and effort. I just don't like their attitude. You know, I don't, I don't like the way they're representing themselves to me. And, you know, you don't want to lose confidence in writing altogether. Like, I've met so many people that get so discouraged when you give them criticism that they won't pick back up and write again. And it's like, man, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to help you here. And you're just, you're like, you're not listening at all. You're just getting emotional and upset at me. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And I have lots of authors that are like that. Um, Orson Scott Card. I love a lot of his style of writing and whatnot, but man, I do not like him as a person. Like, no thanks. Editing isn't for everyone. I couldn't do editing. Like, straight up. No. I just, I couldn't do it. I would probably, like, <laughs> I would probably like, rip my hair out. You don't read books, tea bags. Do you listen to audiobooks? Audiobooks are pretty neat. It is. If you don't phrase things correctly, and see, this is why um, why I've always needed an editor, because it's like I write a ton of crap, right? And I know when something transitionally doesn't work, or like, you know, if it's kind of a murky idea and it's not clear enough or if I'm just really not into writing that story at that time, yeah. Like I have to have somebody else kind of come up and kick me in the ass and go, I don't know what you were doing with this story, but you probably shouldn't write anymore on it. Or you know what? You probably need to take out this entire section because it just didn't make sense. <laughs> but I have fun. So there's that. At least I enjoy writing. Yeah, hopefully in order to get published, um, you know, I do, I've been working with an editor right now who is like, she's um, really awesome. I think her name is Robin and uh, she's been helping me with that, but it, she also has like, she has her kids and everything too. So she's helping me like with editing and whatnot. And I'm like so antsy because I'm ready to get it to a publisher, but now I'm like starting to freak out about my query letter because I've been reading a bunch of different examples and I'm like, I don't know what to put in here. I've wrote a lot of stuff, but I haven't been published in any journals or, you know, anything like that. So, well, to be honest, I've never even sent my work into journals before, which I kind of thought about doing. I've done NaNoWriMo, but I haven't like sent them off to uh, journals or anything like that. I love writing short stories and audiobooks. Those are fun. I put up a lot of those on YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, I've had, uh, I, like, back when I first, oh, gosh, I say first, I've been writing for years, since I was a little girl. But, yeah, um, the first time I tried to actually pursue it professionally, I had a really bad experience with an editor that um, I think it was like my I think it was my first year in college and we were I took a lot of creative writing courses 
which pretty much everything I could because I, I actually minored with a, a writing. I did, I did a double minor in school, but I loved writing so much. It wasn't part of my degree. I was doing a neuroscience degree and I was like, I love it so much that I'm just going to take as many classes as I can. I had so much fun in those classes. But then I, I sent my work off because my teacher encouraged me. She said, your, your stuff is good. I think you should send it off for publication, like go through a journal and whatnot. So I sent it to my first editor. And this was when I was still kind of like impressionable about my writing and a little emotional about it. And she was like, it's crap. Like, don't even, don't even bother. Like, you should pursue something else. And I'm like, oh, okay then. And so for a while I went through this like phase where I like, I couldn't, I couldn't open my writing or anything because I got really upset about it. And then eventually I realized that lady was a jerk. <laughs> and so, you know, about, I guess it was about four weeks later or something, about a month or so, I was like, no, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pick it back up again because I really enjoy it. And it might not be like a superstar or something like that, but I'm going to try for it. And now I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go for publication. <laughs> And what you want to do is you want to look for ways to uh, constantly improve. Like every time I look at my writing, I think there's always something I can improve on. There's always something that isn't quite right. There always is going to be something that someone's going to find that's just not right. Maybe, maybe that's just not your style of writing. Maybe you just don't enjoy reading about that. But the thing I always have to remind myself of is just keep it up. And just keep trying and you know if you're gonna pursue this professionally then you're gonna have to take a lot of advice and those you know those metaphorical blows and everything like okay I got this <laughs> okay so being that you're going to need to be super I guess determined to do it if you hit a point like myself um, and you really want to take it to that professional level. Um, I did an entire video over, um, and I put it up here on YouTube, I did an entire video over what it means to actually get um, into publication. Well, you've already explained, uh, I know you explained something about the explanation of an idea, which I believe is what uh, exposition is. Um, I have one of those minds that I explain things, and uh, I tend to go into detail over things that interest me. So usually I'll start, and I've, I've actually talked about this before on here, but I'll start explaining to people things like research and ideas and stuff and mythologies and all of that. And people's eyes do this. Okay. <laughs> so I actually was completely unaware that that was a thing. So that was that's kind of interesting that you pointed that out because I had no idea. Because uh, most people are like, "You're really detailed, and it's awesome." And it's kind of funny because it's like I always ask people to tell me like weaknesses they found and it's always the polite response of no it's really cool I, I learned a lot and it's like damn it they've been lying to me <laughs> in a nice way but they've been lying so that's why I need an editor you know and I don't know I don't know how long um, it's gonna take but I'm something like I think my first book was something around 50 I think 52 or it was either 52 or 55 for my first book so 55k, something like that. A lot of people won't want to hurt your feelings. Anyone can publish a book. Yes, yeah, see, I don't, I don't want to just publish a book. You know, like it's not just about publishing the book for me. It's about growing as a writer in general in a way that people can, um, they can be interested, but at the same time, it's also correct on all other fronts. So I have these like, you know, I get these ideas 
and if I can't put them in a clear, concise way, it's not going to interest a reader, no matter how interesting research is to me. It's not interesting to that reader, so it like, it makes sense. It makes total sense. <laughs> usually lurking uh, yeah I, I try not to like creep on people that are in my chat because I've seen some cringy stuff before where people will call out other people that come into chat and they're like hey so and so how, how are you doing and it's and they haven't actually posted in chat like I think that's a little invasive and kind of strange like <laughs> you're just calling out people that are sitting there in your chat nah. they'll post in your chat if they want to talk <laughs> We're talking about Gray's many errors in her writing <laughs> and her journey to publication and me also trying to, I guess, have the audacity to actually give you guys um, writing points. <laughs> oh, so how is everyone today? Is there anything anyone wants to talk about with their own writing? Anything they'd like to, I don't know, just go over? I noticed someone else mentioned something about doing a creative uh, writing workshop, like an actual one where we can sit around and kind of talk about each other's work. And uh, I think that'd be fun. Hey, had one too many. <laughs> How's it going? Oh. Okay, so the, the information's relevant because she comes back to it. Like, it's the so it starts here in the States and it shifts over to Japan. Like the setting is going to actually be there. Oh, I see what you're saying. So when I was putting in the information about Japan, you didn't understand why that was necessary to put in there because of like a background exposition type thing. Okay. I get that you needed that information, but I didn't really get that she moved from there. Yeah, they brought her over. So maybe I missed putting that in there. So I'm sure there's all kinds of things I've missed. <laughs> so no, you can't do that. Your story has to tell me that. Oh, nice. Yes. And there's, I think there's actually a free version on Kindle. Like if you have the what is it called? Kindle Unlimited or something like that? Like, I think you can get it free on there. And I think also Smashwords has a version uh, that's been put up as well that I think is like a dollar or something like that. <laughs> there is certainly think you can get way better. <laughs> Yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying uh, doing a lot of audiobooks too. When I write my short stories, a lot of my short stories are geared towards doing it. Well, I call them audiobooks, but they're not full fledged books. They're more like audio stories. So I like writing for those. And I don't have time to write much for film, which I, I do occasionally, and that's really fun. Um, <laughs> but that, that's hilarious. Like, you can, you can get better. <laughs> Can't I always? Can't everyone? Uh, so speaking from the side of someone that really does enjoy writing, um, but also someone that understands uh, what the writing process should actually be and look like and to get there, um, you need to have someone in your life that motivates and pushes you and just like we were speaking about earlier you need to have the right sort of editor and you definitely need to make sure that uh, that editor is going to tell it to you like it is so it's good it's definitely good to have someone that's going to push your buttons in a good way and sometimes in a frustrating way because if they're getting under your skin that means they've hit a point you already know about. It's kind of like relationships in life where um, someone that can really push your buttons is because 
you, you like you care about them and you trust them and it's the same with an editor if they can push your buttons and they know how you function they're going to be able to tell you like up front how it be <laughs> yeah so usually when i first start writing what i do is i charge through i just i from start to finish i write 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 and of course i set out my outline first you know, here's what I want to happen by end of book one. I'll do a generalized outline. Like, okay, by book one, I want to get to this point and I want to end here so that book two, I can pick it up at this point in the timeline and my continuity is golden. But um, yeah, I, I don't like to jump around, but I hear a lot of people enjoy writing that way. Some people will write beginning, end, come back to middle, go back to the beginning, and then maybe, oh, there's something in the end I wanted to add, oh, and there's something in the middle. Like, I can't do that. I'm one of those people that I have to sit and write through it and then go back and edit. And it creates issues sometimes, because <laughs> after I'm done, like finished with the book, and then I go back and edit, I realize there's like a whole section that I need to embellish or change or fix, and then I'll have to fix that and go back to the end and like, okay, I gotta edit this a little bit more. So yeah, yeah, exactly. For me, the first draft is just about getting it finished, like getting through it, which is why I love NaNoWriMo because it forces me to sit down for that month and just write. Like every day I've got an objective. Like here's my objective, I need to finish, um, I need to finish this many words by the end of the day, like whatever it is, I need to finish 800 words, a thousand words, you know, 2000 words, whatever I need to finish in the next day or so. I'm like, I've got it because it's right there in front of me. And so I just charge through. And even if I know it's not gonna make sense completely by the end of it, I know that I have completed it. And once I've completed it, it's so much easier to go back and edit it, you know? So I guess, the big message for today that I wanted to impart um, for all of you guys is no matter what level of writer you are, to not give up. Um, I see a lot of really promising individuals give up on writing. Um, and arrogance, as we were saying earlier, arrogance shouldn't be... Yes, a part of that like you shouldn't sit there and think my writing is amazing <laughs> unfortunately there's a few infuriating cases where it's actually true and uh, you know that doesn't matter what matters is if you enjoy the story then you enjoy the story if you enjoy writing and you enjoy to do it as a hobby um, go get involved with writers groups um, you know there's Plenty of, uh, there's writing.com, which I haven't been there in a while. There's the NaNoWriMo community, super amazing, um, really supportive group because they have like Camp, uh, Camp NaNoWriMo, I think is what it's called before the November NaNoWriMo. There's Water Cooler, um, it's either the Water Cooler or watercooler.com, also really awesome, helpful people. And, um, then there's like, there's Twitch now, where you can get on Twitch and you can talk to other writers and editors and people that can help you out. And if it's something that you want to professionally pursue, then you better get that thick hide, ladies and gents. And also understand that editors have read everything. And a good story is a good story. It doesn't matter if it's been told because you know what everything's been told so do your best and keep trying don't give up pursue what is it persist <laughs> the twilight stole my idea <laughs> she lives. writing communities are supportive there are some i have been a part of that are malicious and you have to avoid those uh, but most of the time most of the writing community they're hyper supportive they're like 
They are so awesome. But at this point, if you've been doing a lot of writing and you've been doing like peer reviews um, and that sort of thing, you kind of know the difference between um, someone that is just trying to tear you down versus someone that's actually giving you helpful advice. And <laughs> uh, I've met certain people that might, you know, they'll rub you the wrong way, but pay attention to what they're saying. Don't take it personally. Um, they're literally just trying to help you and ain't no one got time to try to sugarcoat things. Friends and family are bad people to try to uh, get honest reviews from. You need someone that's going to have a very objective view of your work. Um, always feel free to ask questions. That's kind of what this is about. This is about you guys. And um, I am not professional yet, but I'm working toward that goal. So once I get there, maybe I can offer you even more advice, even more sound advice in the industry and let you know um, ways that you can actually self-publish and get published. So I've been through all of the self-publishing route. I can help you with that. I can help you with any of those things help you along as I journey through the publication world. I'm going to take a break and I will be back at 1.30 fortnight PVE. <laughs> take care everyone.